main thing of it that is that it uh, is non-invasive measurement, so it does not imply um, exposure to a, to a, to a radiation. Uh, it does not use invasive um, measurements. It does not require hospitalization of the patient, and it is done entirely with the trans thoracic echocardiography, uh, you have to dispose of a good quality echo scanner with special settings to do this and uh, as a ratio CFR or coronary flow reserve is measured as the ratio between maximal flow at a coronary artery and this is um, related to the baseline flow at the coronary artery. So the ratio uh, of these two values is the CFR measurement. Uh, if I should uh, describe a main limitation, maybe it is the fact that uh, it uh, um, describes the overall atherosclerotic burden of the coronary arteries. So as a stand-alone technique, it is difficult with this method to distinguish between epicardial uh, artery stenosis and microvascular dysfunction of the coronary arteries. Uh, but there are many clinical settings in which we know that a certain patient has, for example, an epicardial coronary artery stenosis and in this setting we could um, use a CFR measurement to assess the significance of this uh, stenosis and also for, for um, follow-up of this patient after stenting. And on the contrary, if we know that a patient has chest pain and does not have significant artery stenosis, then uh, assessing CFR and finding low CFR measurements, we could say that this patient has as a microvascular dysfunction of his coronary arteries. There are two uh, major way, ways of uh, invasive measurement. These are the CFR, which uh, uses the same principle as the non-invasive CFR measurement and is the ratio of maximal hyperemic flow to the baseline flow. And there is also the FFR measurement. I could say that there is a very good correlation between non-invasive and invasive CFR. CFR measurement considering all the limitations of one and the other method of measurement, mainly invasiveness and um, radiation exposure and the need for hospitalization um, during an invasive coronary flow reserve measurement. This is also one of the limitations of uh, non-invasive CFR measurement because it is a method inquiring um, a time which should be dedicated to learn it and this, is, this should better be done in a center with um, experience, with an um, experienced operator and uh, there is also a steep uh, learning curve. So uh, if a physician uh, would like to, to do this method, to apply it to his patient, he has or she uh, has to devote some of his time to learn how to do it in order to do it in the right way. Okay. And finally, what are the clinical implications of this technique? So there are two main uh, topics where non-invasive CFR could be of use. One of uh, them is to assess patients with epicardial coronary artery stenosis. Uh, these patients could have, 
for example, a significant coronary artery stenosis, and this could be assessed with a very good sensitivity and specificity with CFR measurement. These patients could have also an intermediate coronary artery stenosis, and in this way, uh, we could measure if the clinical significance of uh, this coronary artery stenosis is high or not using a non-invasive CFR measurement and um, also patients who have been stented um, may become suitable applicants of this uh, technique because CFR measurement in this setting could show if there is um, risk stenosis uh, in the coronary artery that has been intervened and it is a very useful method for a follow-up of these patients because it is non-invasive and, and could be done um, as often as you want to. The other main application is in patients with microvascular coronary artery disease. There are many such patients. Um, maybe you know that uh, at least 20% of patients who have chest pain and are referred to coronary angiography, they have uh, epicardial normal coronary arteries. But still, at least 75% of these patients have some form of uh, dysfunction of their arteries. This is mainly endothelial dysfunction and microvascular dysfunction. These patients are a good subset to be evaluated with um, CFR and uh, then to follow what is going on in their microvascular system uh, with, um, for example, some therapeutic applications.